Hello, it's Jim Brown here with the story of the good ship Good Enough, a 35-foot constant camber trimaran built by Steve Neal of Camden, Maine, and designed by John Marples, an absolute masterpiece of a boat in my opinion. And I've had the chance to sail in her in two hops from Key West, Florida down to Cancun, Mexico, and from there on down to the Rio Dulce in Guatemala. Here she is hauled out in Key West where she received a new bottom job. And this is her rudder, very interesting, deep, powerful rudder with self-steering trim tab. And note that the propeller, a folding propeller, clears the rudder skeg and the propeller shaft has a V-type strut bearing that uh, is an extremely secure arrangement for an inboard powered boat. And I think it says something that the porpoises just love the underbody of this bucket. Our first hop Hi, took us across the Gulf Stream Hi, to the northwestern shore of Cuba and we didn't have an easy time of it. Our friend Greg Olson was with us and we got knocked around Hi, by the boy. Gulf Stream. But uh, yeah. nonetheless, the porpoises yeah. really enjoyed it. Here she is at Oscar's Marina at Isla Mujeres, right off of Cancun. Very secure place to leave the boat for the hurricane season. And it was here that I had the chance mm. to go over the boat a little bit with the camera. Here we are looking into the cockpit. It's a glorious cockpit, well shaded. But you can open up the front and really keep moving air through there in the, in the tropics. But you can also button up the sides and the back for complete protection. Looking down now into the, uh, I guess this is the forward cabin, yeah. Uh, we have a controlled state of squalor in there. A nice big double bunk and a kid's bunk, but I guess we won't go... All the lines lead from the mast back to a couple of inches in the cockpit and there's the compass and the helm no. and the chart plotter all very yeah. easily accessed. This is a roller between the port sterns that allows the dinghy to be hauled up easily by one guy and kept stowed. Looking aft now at the solar panels and the radar mast all the outhauls and downhauls and reefing lines are controlled from the gooseneck and when the boom is idle it hangs on a pendant from the backstay bridle junction. Very secure. A wind vane self-steering device and the radar reflector and the rig is solid as a rock. Ne never a sign of flexing out of that rig. There's a swim ladder that drops down from the starboard stern and it's good enough for big heavy guys to climb up there. A cooler stored there. Now we'll slide the hatch open and look down into the after cabin, which is presentable. Beautiful galley on both sides. A lot of counter space, a lot of storage space. And looking back into the stern castle, it really is a great place to hang out. A nice double bunk converts from that table and there's lots of storage underneath the galley on both sides. The stern castle will easily sit six people for dinner. Underway again. We came back the following spring, picked up our friend Chick there at Isla Mujeres and took off for Point South. We had some nice sailing going down the coast of Yucatan. It doesn't get any better than this. A broad reach in a multi-hull in smooth water, oh boy. We made a couple of stops in Yucatan but then headed for Belize. There are some huge mangrove keys off of this coast with channels running through. It's an amazing territory. 
Chick went down and got us some conch. That running board alongside the cabin is a great place for cleaning fish and conch and pounding conch. These Belize Keys are now palm studded and sandy, just <laughs> really inviting territory. This is a resort during off season on one of those keys. I can't quite remember the name of it. They had a little gazebo here with a very interesting cocktail table. Once you get sand in your shoes in a place like this, boy, it's hard to keep from coming back. Chick knew this water well. He guided us in through the markers to enter at Placencia. Well protected, very pleasant harbor about halfway down the coast of Belize. Really a groovy little place. We had a good time here. <laughs> the prevailing wind is east, so you have a fair wind going up and down the coast of Belize. We're on a run here. But after several stops in Belize, we entered Guatemala at this groovy little town called Livingston at the mouth of the Rio Dulce. Joe and I really like this town. It's a Caribbean place. It's, it's not Spanish. It's in Guatemala, but it's not very Spanish. And it is right at the mouth of the Rio Dulce, straight ahead. We took a room ashore here in a delightful hotel that we were practically the only ones in the place. We were definitely here at the wrong time of year. It was off season. April is their hottest month and it's also very hazy and smoky as you can see. But the bird songs at sunrise. I'm showing all of this about Livingston because a big part of this boat is where she is. She's down there in, uh, in what I call the crotch of the Caribbean between Belize and Honduras. And it's the very place, the very best place where we ever managed to get our boat to. But it was time to hit the road again. Go on up the Rio Dulce, the great sweet river of oh, Guatemala. And this wall map shows the gorge on the left there. You can see the winding entrance to the river. And then it opens up into a long lake and narrows down again and then opens up into a big wide lake. It's a wonderful waterway. And here we go into the gorge. The limestone walls of the canyon are so overgrown with Tarzan jungle that you can hardly see the rock in places. There's a tremendous lot of chlorophyll and photosynthesis going on here. The reason things are so smoky is that it's in this time of year, March and April, that the local farmers have to burn their fields in order to control insects. So the air is very smoky, besides being the hottest month of the year and the most humid. So we were definitely here at the wrong time. You can imagine what this place looks like in, in uh, December and uh, January after the, the rains have quit, but while everything is still green and crisp, it's absolutely gorgeous. It's gorgeous now.
We were told about a yachtsman's hangout just inside the gorge as the Golfete opens up called Texas Bay. And it turned out to be a real jungle hangout. Texas Bay. These guys were working. The Golfito, Rio Dulce, Guatemala. Hey, dog. I don't want to take him today. Hey, yeah. you go. That's you there. Yeah. And Michael. These folks leave their boats here during hurricane season and then come back and use them when the weather's right. But we knew of another place called Catamaran Island Hotel at the other end of the Golfete. Bungalows right out over the water on a beautiful little island. Incidentally, this is all fresh water. If you leave your boat here, you can get around the river by water taxi. There are lots of them. There's a town here where this bridge crosses the waterway, and it's a jarring experience. Heavy truck traffic right through a narrow street. But just two miles away, you can have your bungalow and your boat. So this is Jim Brown wishing fair winds to the good ship Good Enough and all of those who sail in her. Bye-bye.